Hello students, this is Dr. S. Aparo, Assistant Professor from Department of Chemistry, VNR VJIT College. Today, I am going to explain about water softening processes. In that, uh, I am going to discuss about uh, ion exchange method. Right? In water softening process, there are different techniques uh, that are named as uh, ion exchange method, reverse osmosis, generate process, mixed bed ion exchange method. Among these methods, we are going to discuss about ion exchange method in this particular lecture. And reverse osmosis is also there in our syllabus, right? So, these two topics are there which are from water softening methods. So, let us discuss about this what ion exchange method in detail. Before entering with this topic, let me ask a question called what is exchange? So, we all will hear this word lot of times uh, in our daily life, uh, right? Exchange means uh, replacement of one by other. We all will listen these words uh, very frequently, mostly with the mobile concept and all. They used to release some offers uh, in which uh, by taking our old mobile, they will tend to give new mobile, of course, uh, with some uh, less amount only. Right? So, why we are going to exchange our mobiles? Because it is getting damaged or it is not useful for our regular uses. If they are not useful, we are exchanging with the new one. Right? So, same way, if the water contains unwanted ions in the water, we must remove that ions and exchange with them with the other ions which are useful for water. In general, water contains H plus ions and OH minus ions. So, if any unwanted ions are there, just like calcium or sulphate, that must be removed with H plus ions and OH minus ions. If we are removing the unwanted ions like calcium and sulphate ions with H plus ions and OH minus ions, then we can call it as ion exchange method because we are exchanging the ions with other ions which are required for water, right? And now, is this is possible? For that, let us assume a water droplet. Here, I am going to consider ions as humans here, which are blue colored, first one, which are red colored, second category, which are yellow colored. This blue colored are other ions or humans in my imagination, which are required for water, which are good for water, that are one. Whereas, red and yellow colors are two different characteristic ions or humans, which are not good for the water here. So, we must replace them with the blue colored humans here. That means blue colored ions. Here, I am considering ions as humans. So, we must discuss in this general way so that we will be able to understand very clearly. Right? Is this type of exchange process possible? In general, it is somewhat difficult only because uh, replacing one person with other person is not possible. But here is our ions, right? Let us assume a home that can do this particular uh, magical exchange. That means uh, if this water droplet uh, with uh, a different color ions or humans are entering into this particular entry, they are getting exit from here with replacement, right? Imagine this type of home where it can happen, right? And that also happens in our chemistry. Here, here it is going to be a human in our uh, just general discussion. So, how and before that, uh, let us have a title to our topic uh, because we are uh, finding a home to exchange the bad people with the good people. Where is the way to exchange home, right? So, here we are going to a home where we are going to get the exchange, right? Bad people are going to be replaced by good people. That's what the meaning of exchange home here. So, we are searching for that home. Imagine this home is going to do a magical issue here that are one water droplet with a, uh, with, uh, a different humans are entering into this water and they are coming with a replacement of by a good humans. That means uh, 
red colored humans are replaced with blue colored humans here that means uh, this home is going to be a magical home from my perspective and it is going to be called as exchange as we are exchanging here uh, humans we can call it as human exchange process here the same way if the red colors are called as ions that can be called as ion exchange process but uh, we are not uh, completely done because yellow people which are bad to the water droplet is also there in our water so let us again send them through other home where the yellow people which are not good for water are replaced with blue colored people which are good for water in this way and here yellow colored people are replaced so we can imagine or we can see here very clearly the yellow colored people are again replaced with blue colored people very interesting right and this type of things will not happen that much easily and so i named this home as magical home we must know about this home very carefully because this type of homes can make a magic here right this magical home is resin in my chemistry or in the chemistry discussion right and here we can see this is going to act as a resin here the humans which are represented as humans here are ions the unwanted humans are represented with red color and yellow color that can be replaced with blue color and so we are exchanging ions by using resin here so resin is our magical home in this particular explanation or general explanation now let us go into the topic that is ion exchange process which also can be called as deionization why because all the unwanted ions will be replaced from water except h plus ions and oh minus ions which is also called as demineralization here we are replacing the unwanted cations and anions with the h plus ions and oh minus ions which are attached to resins and to obtain deionized water that's what the principle here that's what we have seen in the animation pictures and here that as per our imagination this magical home is resin in this chemistry explanation and we must know about this magical home because that is the reason for the exchange of the ions and which are having a characteristic properties that are going to have long chain organic polymers long chain organic polymers all might have seen in the type of soaps and all right soaps also will have long type of compounds the same way this resin also will have long chain organic polymers we can imagine this long chain as for example so much rcoo h something like that right and which are going to have cross linked what is the meaning of cross linked cross linked means uh, linkage so many linkages functionality is more if one molecule is having uh, so many cross uh, so many functionalities or binding sites uh, that can be called as cross linked how many binding sites we are having it in general two hands but we can have it as two legs also right so total we can call it as four ways we can uh, connect to anyone so that is called as cross linking if we are having more than two then linkages are react reacting sites that will be called as cross linked and it is going to have micro pore structure property which is very important property because micro porous means that will have a pores that will have absorbing property right because of its absorbing property only this is able to take the ions which are not required for the water and giving h plus ions which is there with the resin and this is insolubility and these are the characteristic properties of resins long chain organic polymers cross linked micro pore structures and insoluble now resins are of two types one cation exchange resin other one anion exchange resin let us discuss this cation exchange resin and anion exchange resin these two examples i have shown with two different homes in first home we have forwarded through one home where all red red humans got replaced otherwise then then onwards we we moved towards uh, one more home where all yellow humans got replaced the same way here also two type of uh, exchanges one is cation exchanger other is anion exchanger right and in cation exchange process if you are looking into carefully here this must process some type of 
groups that are functional groups functional groups only making this resin to exchange ions so functional groups are the main key points that are responsible for the ion exchange properties acidic functional groups are the one which can exchange h plus ions basic functional groups are the one which can exchange oh minus ions so there are two different functional groups one can exchange protons one can exchange oh minus ions and here here is the overall picture of the demineralization of water where we are going to pass through cation exchanger and an anion exchanger. This is what we have considered as uh, homes actually. And uh, first of all, we are going to add water here and we are connecting to this water and we are allowing this water to pass through the cation exchanger where one type of cations just like our example red humans got replaced here same way cations will be replaced in this first generator exchanger that is here and the remaining anions that are yellow humans are yellow people got replaced with second home right the same way anions will be replaced in this particular exchanger so both yellow and red are got replaced so surely we'll get a water which is pure in water right which contains only similar type of humans or ion that's what the explanation we have given with a general example but uh, here the cation exchange resin and vanillin exchange resin can undergo little damage as they are attached with calcium and magnesium and also anions we must do a process called regeneration so before entering into the regeneration process uh, let me ask a question why we have forwarded our water through cation exchanger first then anion exchanger why not first through anion exchanger then cation exchanger exactly we have an answer for that if you are sending first through anion exchanger it will form hydroxides which will form folds that are accumulations of unwanted materials so in, in order to avoid unwanted accumulation compounds we are forwarding through our we are passing through our cation exchanger first so we are passing through cation exchanger first only to avoid unwanted materials that are called fouls our multivalent cations cause the most fouling and hardness removing them first protects the anion that is from the precipitation and reduces scaling potential if you are sending this through first anion right that anion will do undergo scaling that should not happen and also undergo precipitation by forming hydroxides so we should not send through anion exchanger first because anion exchanger will give us hydroxides which can do precipitation undergo precipitation and scaling are the causes reasons for that and moving on to next point uh, anion exchange resins are more sensitive to organic and oxidizing contaminants treating cations first reduces uh, anionic load so this is the way we have to process our uh, so called water we must pass through cation exchanger then anion exchanger now moving on to cation exchange resin what is the meaning of cation exchange resin right styrene divinyl benzene copolymers are called cation exchange resins when they are sulfonated only they will be able to exchange with h plus ions this is the structure of cation exchange resin if you are, anyone is asking do we need to write the structure of this cation exchange resin in the examination actually it is better to practice and write it if they are giving as important question here and moving on to the process of cation exchange resin here the RH that are cation exchange resin that are exchanging the cations cations and giving R2 Ca plus 2 or R2 Mg plus 2 plus our required H plus ions here let us see this particular what to call process here the resin the long chain compound we can see here this long chain compound is taking calcium ions and releasing H plus ions and taking this calcium ions and releasing H plus ions means it's doing exchange and so it is called as cation exchanger it is taking cations present in the water and releasing cations that are H plus ions to the water now the same way anion exchange resins also will do anion exchange 
right? Anion exchange resins are styrene, divinyl, benzene copolymers, or amine formaldehyde polymers, which contains NH2 group. In presence of basic minimum only, they are able to able to exchange OH minus ions. This is the structure of anion exchange resin. Here also we can see this is longest chain which can replace which can replace sulfate ions which are locking sulfate ions inside the resin and releasing OH minus ions. In this way we can understand the ion exchange process they are blocking it but inside our home that is magical home we will not be able to know what is going to happen that's what we are going to see here very clearly it is locking the anions which are not required for water and it is releasing OH minus ions. So H plus ions are released from cation exchanger and OH plus ions are released from anion exchanger. Together along with our water it produces pure water that called H2O that is deionized water. And here we can see the equation ROH that is our that is our resin that is anionic resin. Anionic resins replaces Cl minus and sulfate ions and carbonate ions. Here if you are interesting, if you are looking into the equations, R2SO4 2 minus will be there and R2 carbonate will be there. Only for chloride ion it will be RCl. Why? Because chlorides are monovalent. For remaining all things we must write it as R2SO4 2 minus, R2CO2 2 minus, for previous case R2Ca2 plus and R2Mg plus 2. Only for chloride ions we can write it as RCl. Very important while writing the equations because equations play an important role in the chemistry also. And moving on to regeneration. Why we have to regenerate? Because our resins are binded with calcium and magnesium which are not good for water and sulphates also. But we want to use this resins again and again because resins are little costly and we must regenerate these resins as new resins. In order to regenerate that new uh, our uh, resins which bonded with uh, calcium and magnesium and sulfate ions uh, we must wash with uh, strong acid and strong base. Acidic uh, resins uh, we will wash with strong acid. Basic resins which bounded with sulphate ions will wash with strong base to get our pure resin that is RH plus and ROH minus. Again these resins will be ready to use in our ion exchange method again and again. Right. So these are these will go in the washings. In this way we can remove the unwanted ions from the water very carefully and what are the advantages this this can be used for highly alkaline water and highly for acidic water also and residual hardness of water is low as 2 ppm very good for treating water for high pressure boilers. Very important point to be noted is why it is called as deionized water. This will not, uh, this is not only removing all calcium or chloride ions, uh, which also removes uh, Na plus ions and Cl minus ions present in the water. And so it is making the water free from any cations and any anions which are not only doing damage, which, uh, which are not doing damage but present in the water. That also will be replaced by our so called ion exchange process and so this is called as deionized it will not allow any ions other than H plus ions or OH minus ions present in the water that is why it is called as deionized process if you are looking into the disadvantages this is expensive and turbidity should be less than 10 ppm so this water must be purified before using this ion exchange method that means coagulated there is a process called coagulation right in our syllabus that coagulated this can be coagulated before using for a ion exchange method that is one more step to be done that's what the disadvantage is here and needs skilled labors here because we have to use the total exchange process and for that we need skilled labors actually right and I hope you all understand the process and thank you. Like, share, comment and subscribe VNR Digital Learning Resource YouTube channel.